You're listening to the Ask Drone You podcast. You ask, we answer your drone questions. Whether you're here to turn your passion into profit or you simply fly for fun, we're a community of learners and teachers who aspire to achieve greatness. We are Drone You. Hey, everyone, and welcome to another fantastic episode of Ask Drone You. My name is Paul. And my name is Rob, so happy to be here with you. Thank you for spending a few minutes of your day with us. This is episode 1049, very excited to be here. Thank you very much everyone for listening. Uh, Thank you very much for your continued support. For those of you who are DroneU members and have given back for the free information that you have gained here, thank you. Uh, Also to all the success stories out of DroneU, so happy for you guys. Uh, that's why we're here. And uh, we just got another one just this morning. And really? man, there's so much good going on in this community. And I'm very grateful for it. So I'm excited uh, today to talk about someone who is looking to get in the industry. And they're wondering, well, can I really do it with a Phantom 3? And I'm sure a lot of you already have opinions as I'm uh, as I'm talking about this right now. But I think it brings up a good point and a good question for all of you existing business owners, existing drone pilots, which is if there are people out there that are super hungry for jobs and they're willing to do it on subpar equipment and they're willing to work super, super hard on their skills so that they can overcome some of the limitations with technology, with their skill set, it's got to make you think, what are you doing to maintain your skill level and maintain the value proposition of your company because if you do not maintain it you're not going to maintain clients well and i guess i would probably say not maintain but improve if you're maintaining think about that eventually you're going to go this way if you're not pushing to go this way so i agree it's a great lesson when you've got people like this that are out there and uh, willing to work uh, you kind of better watch your back so true so true yes so today's question is brought to you by our upcoming austin mapping class if you go to the and you click enter then what you're gonna do is you're gonna say trainings and go to training events when you go to training events you're going to see that we have a mapping boot camp in austin and we have a mapping boot camp in san diego and very soon the uh what is it called the schedule for 2020 should be up ever so soon so very excited about that we already have our locations picked out for 2020. Um, in addition you're going to be hearing a lot about the fly-in coming up uh it's it's I'm so glad it's back. So glad it's back. So many people enjoy it. Every time I go to a class, when are you coming bringing the flying back? So, well, let me just say that I am very glad that it's back as well, particularly in the form that it's going to be back in, and uh, it's going to be it's going to be a little bit different, but it's going to be super cool. For sure. For sure. Super super cool. All Check right. it out. Stay tuned. It's going to be up here soon. Hey, my name is Mike, and uh, I have a question for you today. It's basically asking, um, I know this is 2019, and there's plenty of better drones out there, like the Phantom 4 Pro and the Inspire and all those, but uh, right now I'm actually a pretty broke person. Um, I'm working at a call center for like 10 hours a day, so right now I'm just starting to build my capital up. So my cheapest drone I got was a Phantom 3, and um, it was actually standing I just want to make sure, is that adequate enough to start, like, maybe doing some digital, like, mapping and maybe do some real estate shots? Because I'm basically using this to start out and get used to the uh, process and how to fly and, and stuff like that. And I know I've actually flown once, and it's I've flown once before, and it's absolutely amazing. Because I've flown, like, the cheap drones. I can get, like, 20, 30 bucks, and the um, data control I can get from the fan is amazing. So, yeah, that's what, that's what my question is. Thank you. Thank you very, very much, Michael, for uh, what I would say the vulnerability of that question. I absolutely love it. Uh, I personally love where you're at. Um, I just want to encourage you, number one. I know Paul will have some some great insights for you. And uh, like what Paul and I were talking about before we started the show, people that are not, uh, well, I guess it was actually during the show before the question. Uh, you better watch your back uh, if people like Michael are out there. And the one thing that he said or, or that you could just hear in his question is how excited he gets about flying drones. 
and that's a really great foundation. Like he just, you can tell it similar to what you do when you are actually, I've kind of learned to be that way as well. It's just so much fun and so exciting to be out there flying drones and it's kind of an escape. And I I hear that in his voice, which is really cool. I think he's going to be fine. Let's help him get there. Yeah. Um, so let's, let's just talk about this really quick. Yeah. When it comes to flying and learning your skills, can you learn all those skills on a P3? Yes, you totally can. Um, can you learn to take really epic photos? Sure, you can. Are you going to get the best photos? No. But like Vic says in his new uh, photography class, uh, he, you know, he talks about how everyone can snap a photo. It's what you do with the photo after the fact mm. that's going to determine whether you get clients and whether you continue to get clients. So I would say if he really learns how to utilize the sensor, how to take, you know, bracketed shots, how to really maximize uh, the video out of the drone, you know, with ND filters, as far as video and photos are concerned, while it may not give him the best material to market and promote himself with, it's going to give him enough to practice with. Mm -hmm. Um, So I think that he can definitely still market himself on Instagram through every mobile device out there, a 12 megapixel image is still powerful. Look at the iPhone uh, 11 Pro, still 12 megapixel uh, images. Now, you know, the dynamic range out of that is 13 stops versus a a nice 9 or 10 from the uh, Phantom 3. But that being said, will it inhibit his ability to get clients? Maybe. Some clients may really be looking for print images and they want a much higher uh, resolution than that. Um, But for some of the entry level clients that he's going to be trying to get, I really don't see it as uh, a hindrance. Again, if he's practicing every day, if he does what I call the perfect practice model where he's out there practicing missions. Okay, I got to fly a house. I got to fly a ranch. I got to you know, fly a commercial building. I've got to inspect this. I've got to go up for an HVAC company and quickly find, you know, the serial number. I've got to navigate the this very complex environment. Um, the more challenges that he provides to himself, the better off that he's going to be. And I, again, I really think that this parallels what drone service providers should be doing as well. Um, because again, without practice, you know, drone piloting is not something that you just stay good at. It, it, it's not like riding a bike. I mean, man, just the other day when I was tracking some antelope, I realized just how jittery I've gotten on the sticks without a significant amount of practice. And Hmm. I've still been flying all the time. I literally, I fly every single week, you know, and I'm still like, oh, I'm not doing the hard stuff enough. I'm not really, you know, challenging myself. Not flying through enough fences. Through enough (laughs) fences. It's been funny. People are like, I've been flying through gates since 2015. I'm like, I've been flying phantoms through fences since 2011. (laughs) Kiss my... No, I'm just kidding. Were Phantoms around in 2011? The Phantom 1 was the first one, 2011. Huh. Anywho, so he also asked about any sort of mapping. I think he used the term digital mapping, but whatever. So I think that this is where we get a hard shift, right? I don't think he's going to be doing any mapping and any accuracy. Um, The P3 being a 12 megapixel sensor, linear rolling shutter, you have everything working against you. Um, Can you understand the basics of acquisition? Sure. Can you go out there and map something and, you know, try oblique imagery, free flight imagery and all that? Yeah, sure, Mm -hmm. you can. Um, Are these models that you're really going to want to go out there and show to your clients Well, that depends on how much work you put into them, because if you're willing to put 16, 17 hours into a model of cleanup and crazy amount of acquisition, sure, you can utilize a P3 to showcase a model uh, to a potential client. Uh, It's not going to be accurate. It's going to take an exponential amount of work, let's say four to five X of what a normal mapping job would be. Again, I think that's a good thing because it's going to prepare you for the actual real life jobs. So. Yeah, no, I, I'm. It, I mean, if you approach it the right way and and take the right attitude about it, which again I feel like uh, Mike is going to do, it could actually help him in the sense of how um, deeply he's going to have to pursue learning with that drone at a level that you wouldn't if it if the drone does all the work for you, right? Am I stating that correctly? It's going to actually give, I mean, it's going to be hard. It's going to take more time, but he might actually learn at a deeper level than he otherwise would. I think a hundred percent. Yes. Which again, this, this is like, you know, that whole parallel where, <clears throat> man, I will never forget. My dad told me this and I will never forget how much anger and hate I had towards him when he told me this, but he was like, Paul, Ouch. <laughs> he was like, Paul, if you really want to be the boss, if you really want to own your own business, you really want to work your way to the top. You want everyone to answer to you. He's like, then you need to understand two fundamental things. 
Point number one is you never ever tell someone to do something that you're not capable of doing yourself. Mm. Um, and I think that's more physical or you're not willing to do yourself. There are some things I am not capable of doing, like web uh, coding and whatnot, but I understand it enough to give instruction, okay? But it's more about like you don't tell someone to go grab the broom and sweep the floors unless you're willing to do it yourself. And I think that that's extremely important. The second point that he said, and this is the point that I remember hating him so much for, was if you're going to be the best, you have to start at the bottom and you have to work every single job in the factory, every single job in the office, every single job in logistics to fully understand how the business works so you can understand the nuances of that job, the problem it solves, and the, and the problems that it creates creates by solving other problems. That way you're going to be in the best position possible to really, you know, look eye to eye with your teammates or your employees, whatever you want to call them, to then say, you know, I've done this myself. I see what you're going through. And when they actually understand that you know what you're talking about, I think the respect is just going to be a, a, like a, you know, like a waterfall. It's going to be everywhere because they are going to see that it's you true. see eye to eye with them. And with that being said, I think the parallel is here too. If this guy learns how to do all the complex flight maneuvers, you know, he's willing to go out there and fly it through obstacles and really understand close proximity flight, maybe after a flight mastery class, um, <laughs> he's really going to be in a much better position than I would say a majority of the drone pilots that are out there today. I mean, I keep seeing the same themes prevalent from industry to industry, which is the people who are the most successful dive the deepest in research, are able to create relationships and mm -hmm. act professionally. Here, here. Pretty easy formula. Yeah. I it's mean, just it hard really to follow is. it. That's right. And uh, I think we, it's funny because I think sometimes we overcomplicate the process and the formula because we don't actually want to do the simple stuff that it actually takes. Mm hmm. So, in other words, we overthink it and uh, kind of drive ourselves into the ground as a result instead of into the sky. Yep. No, but I'm excited. I'm, and, Mike, I actually hope that you uh, stay uh, in contact with us. Um, if you're not a member, I hope that you will be soon. And uh, we, we really want to know about your progress and, and how we can help. So uh, let us know. Oh, yeah, I am so excited so excited because when people like him are willing to say, you know what, I'm resource limited, mm -hmm. but I am not resourcefully limited. Absolutely. Definitely it says everything about his, his propensity for success. Yeah. If he maintains this, he will be successful 100%. On that bombshell, that's going to do it for us today. My name is Paul. My name is Rob. This is Ask Drone You. Ask Drone You.